Hi everyone, and welcome to my review of Yasujiro Ozu's The Only Son, um, his first sound film. Um, and it was in 1936 and um, comes on this double pack from late spring. Um, <laughs> what a great double pack that is. Um, and you know, this is his first sound film, of course. Um, this was one of the first Ozu's I saw actually. It was my third one, I believe, uh, back in December last year. And I rewatched it again last night. Um, and Yes, um, you know, before going into this, I thought, you know, it'd be a good place uh, to begin one of his first films, you know, um, to watch. And uh, I was a bit, you know, like, we'll see how he transitions from, from silent to, to sound, because a lot of filmmakers, you know, they didn't quite uh, make it, you know, straight away. There are exceptions, you know, Chaplin um, and stuff. Although you could say the modern times is kind of a uh, in between silent and sound, a gradual, uh, but, you know, uh, after seeing this film, uh, you know, in December, um, and watching it again, you know, last night, uh, really is clear this is uh, it's how good this film is. You know, I, when I saw it, it blew me away um, when I first saw it. And, you know, I'd seen a couple before that, you know, What Did the Lady Forget, I believe, and uh, Brothers and Sisters of the Toda Family. Um, but this was my first Ozu masterpiece. Um, and that's a spoiler for the, you know, the score of this uh, review. Um, but I really think The Only Son... Uh, is a masterpiece and um, what a perfect transition um, you know from silent to sound uh, now that I've seen I Was Born But as well um, you know rewatched that as well and um, yeah just how good that was you know um, but how quick you know Oz was able to adapt his style um, you, know, you know a few years later he made this film it was sound you know as I said many issues arose with, uh, with sound you know cinema um, and the Japanese were actually quite um, you know, throughout cinema, they have been, uh, you know, a bit slower than a transition in a, ch a change in cinema, you could say. Uh, you know, it happened with uh, black and white to colour as well. Um, but yes, um, you know, it was fairly late, um, although you, there were some people still making silent films then, of course, you know, Chaplin. Um, but yes, uh, this is really just a flawless film for me. Um, now, it's basically, uh, it's, well, it's a very interesting film for Mozu because most of his films, you know, they take place within a certain, you know, a small period of time, um, you could say. There are a few exceptions, um, but this actually is one of the, the ones where it spans quite a, quite a few years, um, you know, the story on that. Um, it begins with this kid, you know, I think he's, you know, he's about 10 years old um, or something like that. And, uh, you know, he's with his mother, lives with his mother, um, and she's kind of at this um, factory. Uh, she's working there, she, you know, Ozzy's kind of, um, Shows out early on, you know, the, the factory scenes. Um, and basically, um, you know, at one point, uh, you know, the kid's teacher comes in, um, played by Chishu Ryu, um, and, you know, wonderfully played, you know, in this film. He, once again, Chishu Ryu, you know, he's always great, um, and he was really, really memorable here. Um, but basically, the teacher comes in and says, you know, I heard you, your son has, has told, um, has kind of said that um, you're letting him go to school in Tokyo. Um, of course, that isn't the case. Uh, you know, an argument arises um, after that, uh, but eventually, you know, um, she lets him go uh, to Tokyo to study, and um, you know, for, for secondary school basically. Um, and then, you know, that's when around fifteen minute mark, uh, the time jump happens, and you see him as you know. After that, he's I think he's you know twenty seven years old, um, and you know the time jump. Um, you know, it, it just, you know it covers. It allows Ozu to cover, cover you know, the different um, it kind of uh, periods of this guy's life. Um, and yes, you could say he's the main character, although really the mother is the one that it kind of... It, it, Ozu focuses on more, um, and she is played by uh, Choko Ieda, um, I believe, and she's called Ozun. Um, and she basically, um, you know, after... Um, she, she goes to visit her son, you know, many years later, as I say, with the time jump. Um, and... Basically, things you know, things aren't quite what she thought they were uh, were going to be, you know, because the actual, of course, idea of her letting her son go to Tokyo was was you know based on her staying in this small town, uh, this village, and working away in a factory, really to, to kind of um, it's kind of like a sacrifice, you could say. And they were split apart, of course, um, and of course, you know, the idea was that he would become this you know uh, distinguished sort of uh, man with a great profession. Um, Things arise that, that basically you find out that, that things aren't quite as you, you know as you'd thought um, would would happen. Um, you know, based on him, you know, going to Tokyo and, and trying to um, 
you know, get a, be well educated and stuff. Um, and, and basically, it's an exploration um, after that of just, uh, yeah, mother and son, you know, kind of uh, coming together again and also just uh, the disappointment sometimes uh, that can happen. And, you know, if you don't keep at it, you know, basically. Um, but yes, this is a wonderful film um, from Ozu. Um, you know, the characters, uh, of course, I've mentioned uh, a few, but really they are, they're so uh, well developed. Um, you know, Ozu once again, uh, the script in this film, um, you know, Ozu wasn't um, one of the actual, you know, full screenwriters, but, um, you know, it, it's a great script um, and it, it kind of just brings out these characters so wonderfully. And Ozu, you know, the way he just, um, you know, the way he directs this film is just, again, very, very with ease, you know. Um, there's quite a lot of, um, you know, pillow shots um, and they're a bit more prolonged, actually, than you, you could say, than, you know, <coughs> a lot of his post-war films. Um, in particular, and they've not got quite as much music within, you know, in them pillow shots. Uh, maybe it was just um, a case of him, you know, that was one of the first cases he kind of, uh, he tried this in, of course, his first sound film. Um, and yeah, maybe he just he just developed it more to a more, you know, perfect level uh, in his later ones. Uh, but they were, of course, very nice. Uh, once again, they always work, um, you know, giving you time to kind of breathe um, and just kind of... Um, contemplate what's just happened you could say and you know it happens after arguments and stuff <clears throat> and quite intense scenes um but yes they were very nice as well and just the way this film is shot once again um absolutely stunning you know masterful um cinematography um just the framing and and the, the depth uh you know within the framing and the perspectives uh you know it, you know there's, there's there's things in the in the foreground and the background um in a per, in a perfect balance really um, to give you that sense of <coughs> perspective um, and it just it just works wonderfully you know the way this film is shot is wonderful um, you know the outside scenes as well um, stunning you know um, just the way it captures nature as well um, and once again adding to a spiritual feel uh, throughout the film the way this film is shot um, and edited as well um, there's not there's a lot of um, you know um, prolonged fades in this film actually as well but I guess that's um, to indicate more time passing because this is of course a, it's a bigger scope than a lot of his films in terms of the the, uh, the time that it covers um, but you know this is one of his most um, contained films actually you know it only has a few characters in it really um, you could say uh, until some of the end parts but really the main focus is uh, you know this mother uh, you know the kid um, Rusaki um, and you know you, you see his his life uh, from a kid to of course an adult, uh, and of course you've got his wife, um, and you know he's, he's got a kid as well. You find out really early on, um, and it just you know it's a very very focused film, um, but it does cover such a such a ground, um, and it's that combination really that just makes it really special. Um, and you know it's just a, it's a wonderful film. It, this is one of Ozu's darkest films you could say uh, at times uh, that I've seen. Um, you know, it's very, very bleak at times. Um, I suppose the, the it becomes less so as the film goes on, you could say. You know, more hope comes through. Um, and the film does actually just progressively get better and better. And, you know, even the first 10, 15 minutes are so powerful. You know, the, the, the fact that, you know, the childhood scenes um, and, and just the conversation that happens um, before the time jump is so meaningful. You know, um, very, very powerful stuff that you can everyone can relate to. Um, and feel the kind of pain in the mother, you know, uh, the sacrifice that, that's being made. Um, but yes, it really just gets better and better. Um, and just a constant flow, though. You know, Ozu just, he just brings this film together with ease, uh, as always, really. Um, you know, I've never really filmed, seen an Ozu film that doesn't seem like he's confident in what he's um, <clears throat> trying to do. But it always seems natural as well, um, you could say. And once again, natural, this is, you know, naturally... Uh, shot film and also just uh, the way it's acted you know it feels like you once again he brings you into the the conversations with ease um and, you know natural way um, and you just kind of observe what's going on with um you know it's just such an enjoyable film um, and of course it is dark at times but um you know it's full of hope uh, and that kind of comes through from the middle uh, of the film uh, you could say onwards um but yeah it's just another Ozzy film i absolutely love um you know, as I say, the acting um, from everyone involved, you know, Chishu Rai, even, you know, his character, you, you see him again in the adult scenes. Uh, are, them scenes were just so, you know, brilliant. Um, 
and quite a different character he plays. You could say Trisha Rai in this film than you know his later works. Um, <clears throat> he's not quite as um, you know uh, distinguished and, and gentle. You could say. But he's still, you know, it's just a wonderful performance. Uh, and of course, something very different um, from from him. And of course, he would work in pretty much every Ozu film. Um, you know, Ozu's favourite actor, you know, that works with him, of course. Um, all the way up to An Autumn Afternoon, uh, which is Ozu's final film. Um, and Chishi Rai was just one of my absolute favourite actors now. Um, but just the whole cast, you know, um, you know, the main actor, of course, um, Shin Ichi Himura. Himori, um, I believe he was in a couple of other Ozu films, um, and you know he's been in quite a few uh, Japanese films, <clears throat> so he's a well-known actor, you know, at the time and stuff. Um, he was great, you know, in this film. You know, he, again, he's a little bit like Late Spring, where you, you kind of see it at first. Um, you know, he, he's smiling quite a lot, um, and once again, like Late Spring, um, it becomes clear that um, you know that's kind of that's kind of a a way to hide certain issues that you know are underlying um but i won't ruin too much what happens but you know it's a very very powerful film and uh you know things just unfold um very gradually um, and you soon realize what really is going on and, and and how disappointing some things are you know the way things panned out for this family um you could say but also you know full of hope and there's still you know things that do happen in within the film or or you see that has happened that um you know are very uplifting uh, once again and um, you know they are full of hope, um, so it's a perfect contrast, really. Um, and at times, the you know the photography and stuff is uh, it, it does play it quite dark. But you know, as I say, it is a very warm film once again, of course, um, <clears throat> and, and a film full of hope. Um, so you know, it's not fully fully bleak. Um, you could, like a hen in the wind, really, is still the only the only Ozu film I've seen that's like full on uh, dark. You could say. But even that, you know, when a film's human, um, you know, it's still, it contrasts to that if, if, you, if, if it's, uh, you know, for, for most cases. Um, but yes, The Only Son, you know, it, it's quite a short film from Ozu. Um, it's the first sound film uh, from him and, you know, really quite a flawless transition, you know, after seeing I Was Born But um, and going into this one. Um, you know, it, it's just a perfect transition, really. Uh, you know, all the issues that can sometimes happen with going from silent to sound sort of cinema, you know, um, it didn't really, it didn't, um, you know, occur in this film. Um, and, you know, it's just such a, a polished film and, um, you know, a wonderful soundtrack once again, uh, used to great effect throughout the film. Um, and it's just mainly the, the best thing about this film is the, you know, the humanity and of course the relationship uh, over time of these, this is mother and son and just, you know, his family and, you know, his family unit and the way it comes together at the end, um, of course, as well, some side characters involved um, later on. And, you know, the way that comes together is just wonderful um, and really just uh, just moves me once again. Um, and it's, it's even better than I remembered back in, from back in uh, December last year. Uh, it, you know, it's on the level of I was born but. Um, I won't say which I prefer yet. Um, but for me, it's another 100% film. Um, and not a plus, once again, not quite a plus, but... <clears throat> A masterpiece um, for sure and um, if you've not seen it you know I highly recommend The Only Son um, and just yeah just this uh, set would be great because it comes with Late Spring which is one of Ozu's best films of course and one of the finest actually of all time uh, but yes um, The Only Son really just when I saw it it blew me away and um, it's grown on me even more this time um, wonderful film without really any flaws um, and while Ozu, you know, his style isn't quite as um, confident and, you know, quite as perfect as some, like things like Late Spring, these post-war films, uh, Tokyo Story, uh, stuff like that, it's still pretty flawless. Um, and, you know, the pillow shots and everything, you know, his traits um, are just, you know, they work so wonderful in this film and just such a powerful film, moving film and uh, very, at times, uplifting and, um, you know, just... Enjoyed all the characters and uh, everything that happened in this film, and uh, a short little film. You know, I want, I would, you know, I was quite sad to see it end, but you know, a, a perfect, really a perfect uh, debut for sound for Ozu. Um, so yes, um, thanks for watching my review of uh, the Only Son and um, some next reviews. Um, you know, that will come uh, maybe next week or the week after. 
I'm going to go back to my Sergio Leone films, of course, uh, with A Fistful of Dynamite. Uh, yes, this was put on hold for quite a time, you know, a while now. Um, and it's just a case of me forgetting to watch it and, and I didn't get round to it. There's a couple of times where I was about to watch it, I didn't see it. Um, but I will be watching that again soon and finish off my Leone ranking, uh, my, my director series, with this film. Um, you know, one of the masterpieces of cinema. There's a spoiler. Um, and of course, uh, on the release date, this came as well, Phantom Fred, uh, which I have not seen, I have not opened yet. But Paul Thomas Anderson is one of my favourite directors, and um, this marks, um, you know, another director series I'll be doing. Um, I'll be watch, rewatching all of um, his films in order, Paul Thomas Anderson, because I have seen them all. Um, the seven prior to this, but they weren't in order, and they were some of them were last year. So, um, you know, I'll be watching them all in order, and then finishing uh, with Phantom Fred, um, which you know I've heard great things about, and I cannot wait. Um, with one of my favourite actors. Uh, Daniel Day-Lewis. So um, yes, I look forward to all these things uh, and yes, thanks for watching uh, my review of The Only Son.